Okay, so will esports players be paid as much as footballers and sports people? Will they be on 30,000 a week? Will we see fallen on millions of pounds a year? Now, sports people and football players are realistically the only type of people who command this type of wage, apart from drug dealers, simply because there's a very limited supply of professional players and a huge demand from the teams. This, in turn, pushes the price of players up, both their signing fee and their wages. Look at Zlatan, for instance, who's just went to Manchester United for £250,000 a week, which is slightly more than the amount of money that Tweedy has spent on cases, but slightly less than the amount of bicep kills he can do. Having a good player on your team can actually mean the difference in millions of pounds in earnings for the club each year, simply because they can win the games that you need to win. So the market dynamics for footballers are like this. They're so short in supply because between the sacrifices you have to make in your life to practice and play, the plague of career-ending injuries at any moment which wipes out a fair few of them, and that you need to be completely gifted at the game to start with, at any one of these obstacles, the majority of players just sack off their dreams and change career. And loads of them try to do it, but they just don't have what it takes. Even if everything goes to plan, just making sacrifices and having the support doesn't automatically make you a footballer. You need a lot to go right, including a fair amount of luck. Which kind of reminds me, right, I was playing as a striker in school and there was a scout from like a decent team in the area searching for players and I fucking missed a penalty and boom, that was it, man. My dream was over. If I had a scored, who fucking knows where I would have ended up? Probably in the England team, considering how shit we were in the Euros. Anyway, we can prove that there is a limited supply because by simply raising footballers' wages to astronomical highs, you suddenly don't get an influx of amazing world-class footballers. So, with footballers in short supply, if you then add into the mix that there are loads of different football teams trying to sign the players, you have a huge demand. The demand is so huge because, simply, if they get the right players, clubs' earnings can increase massively. Just check out Leicester City, right, who were a well shit football club. They got promoted and came into the Premier League, which is obviously the highest division in, in the UK. Well, in England, really. And they fucking won it, predominantly based off having a few key players. Now, Leicester were at 5,000 to 1 in the bookshops to win the league. A bookshop is basically a betting shop. They struck it right and they made an absolute fortune. From getting higher in leagues and tournaments, television paying you more to show your games to an audience, and from your merchandise sales, all these revenue streams would grow dramatically. Take Messi for example. How many times has that guy ran through the entire team to score a goal and win the game? David Beckham used to bring in £100 million to his football club through merchandise alone, because he had so many fanboys who wanted to buy his shirt with his name on the back. So the right player can mean a big difference. This all means that the prices of football players go up hugely and so do their wages. Suddenly, you can see the similarity in the market between football players and pro esports players. You don't get a fall in every day and you don't get a get right, who is actually playing pretty dog shit at the moment, but never mind. We saw this with RPK. He was a Counter-Strike professional, maybe even one of the best aimers in the world. Behind me, obviously. He ended up taking a two-year break from his gaming to pursue a career in selling cars. Obviously he was pretty shit at it because he ended up coming back to esports and he went straight into a fucking pro team again. In the two years he was away, they couldn't find a single person to replace him, which is fucking madness. Then we look at the best opera in the world, Fallen, or Guardian depending on who you support. He was a 1.6 pro and he was able to compete at the top level ever since. These guys are just naturally gifted and they make such a difference to the team they play on and with the increase in teams attempting to get the right players, we can see a monopolistic market dynamic like football starting to occur. In other esports, check out this map of Dota players who have attended all six internationals and how they've been passed around from team to team. The international is the biggest Dota tournament in the world. Last year, the prize pool was at $10 million. This year, it's over $15 million. These guys are basically the best there is. It's so infrequent that new players come along and they're better. Having one of the right players on your team can make and mean the difference in winning and losing, which is why a player called Arteezy gets passed around from team to team like Justin Bieber would in prison. So, like football, esports players also have a very limited supply. Between you and me, with the growth of esports and the massive leaps and prize pool money that tournaments and leagues are putting forward, all the teams are gunning to get a bigger piece of the pie, and to do that, they need the best players. And the best players 
are going to go to the team that pays them the most. So in the near future, if everything keeps on heading in this direction, the demand is going to get bigger and bigger. We are going to start seeing mega super esports players on our TV with signing fees in the millions and weekly salaries in the tens of thousands, maybe in a few years time. So yes, Fallen among many top esports players in many different games, as long as the prize pools keep growing as quickly and getting as huge as they are, teams will be willing to spend big money to sign these players in order to make sure that they win and earn massive amounts of money in the process. Check out my brand new store on Redbubble where you can find these amazing maps in posters, stickers and t-shirts commissioned by myself and created by an amazing artist called Vintage Ninja Fish. You can find a link to my store and to the artist's website in the description below.